The first reading tells us, after his suffering, Jesus presented himself alive to the apostles by many convincing proofs, appearing to them during 40 days and speaking about the kingdom of God. Jesus wanted to make sure that the apostles are convinced of his resurrection because they are going to be his witnesses of the resurrection. Jesus is the reason for our faith and our belief in his resurrection is where our faith stands and falls. Ephesians chapter one, in the second reading tells us that the power that works in the resurrection is the same power that sits Jesus at the right hand of the Father, far above every rule and authority and power and dominion and above every name that is named, not only in this age, but also in the age to come. The ascension of Jesus then marks the manifestation of the Lordship of Jesus Christ over all creation. And this authority was given to him by the Father after the resurrection. This is why Jesus commands his disciples to proclaim repentance and forgiveness of sins in his name, that they will be witnesses of these things. The Greek word translated as repentance literally means amid the exercise of the mind. So repentance is the result of an exercise of our minds. It is therefore a decision to accept the, that Jesus is the Lord of our lives, submitting ourselves to him and obeying his commandments in trust. And when we do this, we build a throne for Jesus. And just as he ascends his throne in heaven, Jesus will ascend the throne in our lives. And when he does, he, we receive forgiveness of our sins. Jesus pronounced forgiveness for our sins on the cross when he said, Father, forgive them for they know not what they do. Forgiveness is a financial term that means that the one who lends is not requiring payment for the one who owes him money. When God forgives, he is not demanding payment for what we owe him, for what we have done against him. But forgiveness requires that the offender approach the offended. I cannot receive God's forgiveness if I do not come to him and admit my sins. When we come to Jesus in repentance, he cancels our debt and he gives us the power to be children of God. We become heirs of God, receiving the inheritance God has planned for us before the foundation of the world. We receive this inheritance in this life and this inheritance is perfected after death. When God raises our bodies for a life, that is with him for eternity. To receive this inheritance, we must love him and serve him with all our heart, with all our mind, with all our soul, and with all our strength. We must allow Jesus to get rid of idols in our life, the things that control us, whether it be our possessions, our ideas, especially our ideas of who God is and how he works and how he is to be worshiped, our habits, our hobbies, even our families, whatever hinders us from intimately knowing Jesus Christ. This results in suffering. While God is not the source of sufferings, God allows them because he uses them so that we can share in his glory. Our Heavenly Father wants us to experience the joy and exhilaration of the complete destruction of sin and death in our lives, just as Jesus did for all creation. This happens when we deny ourselves, take up our cross and follow Jesus into the depths of our sufferings so we can rise up with him in glory. Jesus ascends to his throne in heaven because he was lifted up 
on the cross, his throne on earth. At this Mass, Jesus invites us to do what the psalm commands, to sing praises to God, sing praise to our King. Jesus, our Lord and King, emptied himself and took the form of a slave. He died trusting his Father to raise him back to life. Because of this trust, the Father gave him the name that is above every other name, so that in the name of Jesus, every tongue will confess and every knee will bow to the glory of God the Father that Jesus Christ is Lord. In every aspect of our life, Jesus Christ is Lord. In our joys and triumph, Jesus Christ is Lord. In our sorrows, in our losses, sickness, sufferings, addictions, sinfulness, Jesus Christ is Lord. When our world is crumbling all around us, in our fears, in wars, in pestilence, in famine, in pandemic, as we are dying and in our death, Jesus Christ is Lord. To the glory of God the Father, now and forever.